Hello everyone and welcome back to Cronus Plays Apollo Justice. Today we're opening that letter. All right, we need to spray. Uh, can we like... I wish I could just hold the button. Is there any way to go like... The other le Oh! There we go. Guess we didn't need to go to the other letter. Uh, examine? Well, would you look at that? No mistaking it. <laughs> That's, uh, aqua... God damn it. A troconine. There we go. That's it. I didn't even have to uh, cut to put into text speech. Residue. I... I don't believe it. A mortal weapon from the past. Now, seven years later, it bears its fangs at last. Absolutely outrageous. Tell me why. Why didn't this murder take place seven years ago? Well, um... There's one possibility. Maybe Mr. Mission figured it out. Figured what out? He realized the person who sent this letter wanted him dead. So he sent his reply with a different stamp. And he puts his decisive evidence in a frame. Hold it. Oh, Jesus. Ah, you're still here? Can, 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 can I make a statement on the record? I spark a razor to the brush who claim this scoop was mine. Drew Misham killed in cold blood. Uh, by sending a seven year old letter. End quote. Hmm, no, maybe uh, something more. Uh... <sighs> succinct, Jesus. No, uh, no, maybe uh, something more succinct. Uh, Star falls after seven year delay. End quote. Order, order. I see no room for further argument here. Though I admit, this is all coming as quite a shock. To think that the murder weapon reached his mouth after seven years. Stamp his ticket straight to afterlife. End quote. Uh oh, I think the witness is bad influence on our judge. Hmm, I see no need for further debate on this matter. The sender of that letter seven years ago could hardly have been our defendant. Apollo! I think we just won in record time, too. So, no? Very well. This court finds a defendant. Oh, right, it's the jury system. Is this the bright future of our legal system? Prosecutor? Gavin? The ticket to the afterlife are from seven years ago. Tickets for Gavinish, uh, Gavinish shows are invalid after two weeks. What? Like, after your show? I would imagine they would be valid the day after your show. Given that the show has already gone on. Or are you talking about after you buy them they're invalid, then how do people get to your show? But it doesn't make any sense any other way. It boggles my mind that so many people haven't noticed this. There's a fatal contradiction to Hair Forehead's claim. A uh, contradiction? A poisonous... Did the music just cut out for a second? A poison stamp was placed in this envelope seven years ago. The whereabouts uh, whereupon it was framed until now. If that is the case, why that would Drew Misham have done what he did? And they explain that. He must have realized it was poison. Then why did he use it again? Therein lies the rub. Seven years ago, the forger Drew Misham sensed a trap and put the stamp in a frame. I do not debate this, but this does beg the question, why seven years later did he use the stamp on the night of the murder? Ah, I mean, that's a good question, a good point. Surely you don't seem to suggest that Mr. Misham simply forgot. He put the murder weapon in a frame on his desk for seven years and forgot? Ooh, is it accidental murder? Me? Uh, we'll see. You expect us to believe he sprung the trap on himself? Uh, wah! Well, I admit, this is all quite shocking myself. It does seem highly unlikely that he would fall afoul of a trap. Has been sitting on his desk for seven years. Apollo, we're not gonna win anymore! I don't, yeah. <laughs> I don't think we're winning anymore. I'm glad to see we're all back in the real world now. Welcome back to reality. As they would stay snapped back to reality. Whoops. Here comes gravity. Uh, we've been waiting for you. Okay, then how do you explain the poison stamp that was in the envelope? The poison stamp? 
Where exactly is this poison stamp again? Have you brought it to court with us? Nah, it's in the postal service. I see no proof that that thing ever existed, except for the uh, stamp-sized residue on the letter and in the frame. What about the uh, atrocanine residue here? Huh? Oh, I agree. That does seem to be atrocanine uh, residue. But here, forehead, it's certainly no stamp. Even if your precious poison stamp did exist, Drew Mission never would have used it. That is all. I believe we come to a conclusion again. Apollo! Were you Ryan the whole time? I don't know. The poison traces match up. It can't be coincidence. I'd like to bring some closure to this issue sometime late this year. Mr. Justice? Yeah, Your Honor? Let's review the facts and see what we, where we stand. Seven years ago, Drew Mission received a red envelope. There were traces of poison atroconine uh, on the document inside the envelope. A similar trace was also found at the crime scene. On this tiny picture frame, the defense has indicated the possibility of a yellow envelope. Well, it wasn't us. It was the witness who said that. But yeah, we just went along with this story. An envelope that left the scene of the crime with the poison stamp on it. That we did say. Yeah, but even if this envelope contained a poison stamp, and Drew Misham knowing this put it in a frame, he never would have used that stamp. Mm, I'm afraid you're right. Which means there is a fatal flaw in the defense's case. I haven't been on the wrong track this whole time, I'm sure of it. The traces of uh, atroconine, the envelope, the frame, and Drew Misham's mysterious death. They're all connected somehow. Well, Mr. Justice, do you have a conclusion for us? The defense stands by its case, Your Honor. We've seen the logical outcome of the evidence of the evidence. Uh, we've seen that the logical outcome of the evidence makes no sense, which means that one of our clues must be a fake. A, a fake clue, fascinating. And if we find this fake, your wild fantasy will prove quite reasonable, yeah. The fake clue that's thrown us off the poison's trail is none other than. Um. Tiny frame? Okay, but here's the thing. The the red envelope was open and resealed, right? That could mean someone put in the poison stamp and removed it. Like we're not, we haven't tested to see how old the residue is, right? I don't even know if they could test that in this game world. I'm assuming they can. They, I'm pretty sure they can test that sort of stuff in real life, at least get a general idea how long something has been sitting around residue wise. So. The poison trail, the three options are red envelope, the frame and Drew Mission. How could the red envelope be uh, a fake piece of fake clue? Uh, it was resealed. So someone could open it and close it, yes. We know he opened it and read it before, but the fact that it's been reopened and closed again does mean that someone else could have eventually opened it and reclosed it and put the stamp in. Uh, the frame. Why the fuck are you framing a, 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 a stamp? That's not like a collectible. That doesn't make sense. And how could Drew Mission be the fake clue? That he fell for the trap after seven years? That he still uses physical mail? <laughs> uh, I don't know. It doesn't look like I'm gonna get penalized for this, so I guess I'll... I guess I'll do the red envelope first. I guess I could also actually save too, just in case I do get penalized. I only got a few uh, little pegs left. The red envelope is a fake. Without a doubt, Your Honor. Attention! Wasn't you who presented the evidence to the court? Oh, hold on a second, Apollo. The poison on the envelope, the frame, and the coffee mug, they're all connected somehow. Oh, right. 
Ugh. I can hear it already. It looks like the fake was you, Fear Forehead. Now is not the time to be wallowing self pity. Let's get thinking, Apollo. And the fake clue that was thrown. Okay. So I'm not getting penalized. So what. The connection between all of them is the poison and Drew. Yeah, so wait, but that's it. <laughs> that doesn't mean anything. Um, <laughs> so see that the framer drew. I guess it's more likely to be Drew then, I guess? Because they the if they're all connected by the poison and Drew, Drew is killed by the poison, and Drew is Drew, so that makes as, as much sense as anything else. The victim was a fake clue. I'm afraid I don't understand. I'll explain. We have an envelope, a frame, and a mug linked by poison. Also a victim linked by poison. That all makes sense. What doesn't make sense is the victim himself. Attention! Congratulations, you've completely lost me. Relatable. So the fake evidence in uh is none other than the master of the fake himself, the forger. It makes a good story, I'll give you that. The fake clue. Fakes. Forgeries. Ah! Oh, I know that face! That's the face of someone who just crapped his pants and had an idea! I don't know if I'm right, but I'm going with it anyways. What if our forger is the fake? Come again? Oh. What, you think... She's the fake? The for forger? But seven years ago, she'd be 12. How the fuck is she gonna make a forgery business? Okay, seven years ago, our forger sniffed a trap and stepped uh, a step aside. Seven years passed. Now the forger stumbles into the very same trap and dies? Why? That's what I want to know. Because the forger who was killed was a fake. Here we are again. The victim was a fake. One forger smelled the trap, one forger fell into the trap. That's two forgers, and one of them was a fake. Get the glow sticks out. Uh, so you're telling me that Drew Mission, the victim, was a fake? Well, if he was a fake, who was the real forger? You better not be claiming this was some kind of switcheroo. I'm afraid you're going to have to back up your story. Mr. Justice, show us just who the real Drew Mistrum was. If Drew Mistrum wasn't the real forger. There's only one other person it could have been. Yeah. Understood, Your Honor. Drew Mistrum himself, uh, forger Drew Mistrum himself was a forgery. The real forger was Phoenix Wright. No, it was this one. There could be only one explanation, really. The real identity of the forger known as Drew Mistrum is none other than his only daughter, Vera Misham. Order! Order! Mr. Justice, this is going out of on the limb, even for you. I kind of agree. I mean, Vera is a, Vera a forger? Let's consider it before you write it off entirely. I mean, if we're taking timelines to consider, what's so weird about a 12-year-old having a forgery business where she gets wired $100,000? Uh, if you look at the paintings in the studio, one fact becomes quite clear. Forgery had been taking place in that studio for quite some time. The forger wasn't caught in, a tra in that trap seven years ago. This can only mean that the one who was caught in the trap wasn't the forger. Well, actually, that does make a certain kind of sense, does it? The only one that the that can only mean that the one caught in the trap wasn't the forger. The forger wasn't caught in the trap seven years ago. Okay. One more thing. Only two sets of fingerprints were found in the forger's studios. Drew Misham's and Vera Missions. If we know that Drew Mission wasn't the forger, that leaves only one possibility by process of elimination. The forger was Vera Misham. Well? Like, okay. I never get thumb rings. He's... Gavin's wearing one. I don't know. 
I never really got rings in general, to be quite honest. But still, thumb seems like very encumbering to wear a ring around. Fascinating. Their mission? You've been paying attention to the trial so far. Let's just ask her and be done with it, shall we? Who are you? Who is the Forger Drew Misham? Uh, sorry. Was that an expression of emotion of emotion I saw on her face? She's staring holes into Prosecutor Gavin's face. I'm used to being stared at by the ladies, believe me. Though they usually talk to me too. Tell us, were you the one who forged those works of arts? Yes. So, so the forger drew mission was you. Yes, it was me. Ah. What? What? The court was in an uproar, and it wasn't coming down. We had a break for a ten-minute recess. To be continued. Uh, yeah, I guess I'll save. Kind of surprised they didn't penalize me on the the the, the connection thing. October eighth. Okay, so where exactly does this leave us, Apollo? Well, Drew Mission was who was killed. It wasn't Drew Mission the forger, basically? Huh. Well, then who was he? Well, he was actually. Doing her nails. <laughs> so you really made those forgeries. Yes. Or father. I know it was wrong. Could you tell us how it happened? My father was a painter. I loved painting ever since I was a child. One day father saw it in me. He saw that I had the talent. The talent for making forgeries? How should I say it? It was not only paintings I made. Giving the materials I could make anything. Anything? Father was so proud and I so happy. But in the end I was making those... Forgeries. I've never had a good constitution nor personality. I know very little of the world outside my door. Now because of me, father is... So wait, your father knew you were making forgeries. In fact, he encouraged it? Is that what you mean? Is that what you're saying? Father was proud, and I was happy. He noticed the talent of you. That's not... I mean, I get it, as a child, Generally speaking, you're going to want the praise and affection of a parent. But a father should not have their kid. And this is seven years ago, so... And who knows how long ago it actually started, right? So, we're talking before you were 12, you started doing this. That's a pretty not good thing to do as a parent. Uh, to encourage that and not only encourage it, praise it and keep it going. Do you know about the red envelope? I remember that envelope. It was some time ago. So you were already, um, you were already creating your works back then. I started when I was only 12 years old. Okay. So the one who figured out the stamp was poison was... Mr. Justice, it's time. To the courtroom, please. R right Out of time. Wait, Vera, just one more thing, please. There's three paintings in the studio. I painted those as part of my work. Right, see, we checked them out and we saw that what was underneath. We saw rough sketches of underneath the three finished paintings. I see. Mr. Justice. Yes? Father, he knew of you. Of both of you. Your late father. He was watching, gathering information. All about the Wright and Co. Law Offices. 
But lately, we, we're not doing law. Speak for yourself. Yes, you do tricks, gags to amuse, and play piano. Well, they're not really gags, asshole. Yet, when Father heard about you had resumed the legal business, how pleased he was. Who was Mr. Misham? How am I supposed to know? What if he was Daddy's daddy? What? I mean, yeah. But he would be old enough to be. Judging from the relative ages involved, I'd say it's highly unlikely. I mean, not really. He would be young. That's true. 19 is a young age to have a kid. I I know younger, so I know a few that are younger. Un like, yeah. Uh, so it's not that unheard of. And honestly, uh, I know quite a few people that in their tw early 20s, like 20 years old, 21 year old, they had kids. So it's not that far off. Things are really confused, already confused enough with all those daddies running around. <laughs> we know what the victim's daughter Vera was the. Uh, we know that the victim's daughter Vera was the forger. What does it mean for the case? Guess we're about to find out. October eighth. Court is now back in session. Vera seems pretty tense. She's practically chewing her fingernails clean off. Perhaps you could begin by telling us how it all worked. How did you set up this Drew Mission Forger persona? There's that stare again. He's drilling more holes into his head. I know it's hard for you, but hey, he's a handsome guy. What's hard? Very well, miss, if you would. Did you really make those detestable forgeries? Perhaps you would rather answer my question. Were you the one who painted that painting? The remarkably, the remarkably similar one. Uh, yes. I painted it, yes. Father praised me quite highly for it. So, she was the one who made the forgeries. Yet she did not wish to reveal the truth of their operation. So the victim was a stand-in, a decor. To the world at large, he was the forger, not her. I've done a bad thing, I have, haven't I? Regardless, we need a little more information. About, for instance, this. You have seen this before, yeah? Yes, it was on the desk drawer. I mean, honestly, why'd you keep it around if you knew it was a trap? Very well, you may proceed with your testimony. Tell us everything you know about this envelope. I created things and father sold them. This envelope came after my first work that was other that was other than a painting. Father handed the handled the deal all of it. I received stamp the stamp that was in the envelope. It was after that job that we moved to the current studio. Hmm. There certainly was much of uh, much great of great interest in your testimony. Not that the witness realizes it. Very well. Please begin the cross-examination. Right, okay. So wait, the address on the envelope and the studio address is different? I need more information about this forger, this Drew Misham. I feel like that's something... Did They might have said that earlier and I just forgot. So these things you were making, uh... You mean paintings, identical to other paintings, right? The closer they were, the happier father was. I was happy too. Still, you're quite young. When did you begin this work? My first painting sold when I was 12. Your Honor, she had no idea that she was doing was illegal. Objection! Easy there, little attorney. You're not here to defend her for the crime of forgery. Hmm, very true. Please tell us more about this envelope. This envelope that may very well have killed your father. All right. Honestly, I... She's still relatively young, 19. Oh, well, I guess we can't see that right now. Um, 
if the crime started when she was so young and her father encouraged it and, well, kept it going, I, she wouldn't get off scot-free, but there definitely would be a lot of leniency, I think it would be, when it comes to the, come to the forgery case, right? Like, it, it would pretty much be like her father groomed her to be a forger, right? So, she probably would be on probation. I don't even think she would serve any jail time, really. Now, she is 19 now, so she is an adult, and as an adult, you're expected to know that doing bad things is, well, bad. Uh, but I think since she was doing it since she was a child, that they would have, they would, there would be a good case where if she just pleaded guilty, she probably would just be on probation for years. She might have to pay some money back. I don't know. Eh, I don't know. But other than a painting, you mean? By other than a painting, you mean only done paintings up to that point? Yes, but father had a realization. He noticed my talent extended to making things other than paintings. For instance? For instance, a letter someone had written, or a fingerprint left upon a cup, or a signature on a document, a seal upon a letter. None of these make her sound very innocent at all. And that hundred thousand dollars promised in that letter was the start. The beginning of a new industry for Drew Misson. A new m industry? The creations of items to be used in criminal proceedings. Forging evidence, in other words. Uh-oh. <laughs> yeah, uh-oh. So you didn't know how things were, uh, how the things you were making were being used. I enjoyed painting very much. I think I understand. The, 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 for in whatever, was, has lived an unusual little world. Can you tell us what happened about to the papers that were in this envelope? Father signed them and sent them back, I believe. Did he follow the instructions? Send in the enclosed envelope with the enclosed stamp. This is a rather important matter. Give your answer some thought. What do you mean you received it? Did I do something wrong? You didn't use the stamp because it was dangerous, correct? Deadly poison on the back. Uh, at Troconine. A moment here, forehead. You're badgering your own, like, <laughs> client. You can't force an answer upon a witness. Now then, perhaps you would tell us. Why did you receive this stamp? Is something wrong? It was beautiful. Ah, you mean it was one of the commemor commemor uh, commemorative stamps. There we go, Kronos. Yes, I think it was. So you didn't know about the poison? I guess not. So the trap failed by chance, by mistake. Thanks to this commemor commemorative stamp. Quite the close call. Oh, you made a forgery of the stamp. And you kept the real one? Is that what happened? You mean you moved to where the current Drew Studio is? Yes, we saw very few people there. I began drawing picture books. This single job had tied them to the criminal underworld. I had to think Mr. Mission wished to reduce their visibility in the world at large. When we had to meet someone for some reason, Father Poise uh, posed as the creator of the work. So that was the real essence of the artist's true mission. You did the work, he supplied the face. So, you really didn't know anything, did you? You had no idea how much danger you were in. Apparently not. About this commem commemorative stamp, could you tell us more about it? It was very pretty, and more than that. Yeah? It was a picture of people I liked at the time. This is something new. 
picture of people you liked at the time. Apparently, we've got some cross-examination cross -examination yet ahead of us. If you would be so kind to continue your testimony. Okay. The stamp was a picture of my favorite magician, so I kept it. Magicians. M magic yeah, I just said that, Apollo. I love mysterious things. I always have. Even though she fainted when she thought I missed the hat. You're confusing mysterious with freaky. She's also very easily startled. I'm not sure if you've noticed that. Father took me when I was very young. It was a great magic show. I love it so much. See? See, isn't magic great? Fine, great, yeah, whatever, sure, sure whatever. Who cares? No one, no need to get so excited. But the magic troop was disband saw we saw disbanded soon after. I was quite sad. Did she just say what I think she said? Magic troop? Now where have I heard that before? Red Emerald came after she completed her first job. Then makes it a letter from her client, whoever wanted a forgery made. Apollo! We're close. We just saw the piece together. We just have to piece together the parts. A deadly weapon in a red envelope, and the path it took to take Drew Misham's life. I have to present something. <laughs> uh, is that right? Oh, the ticket? Is it the ticket? This? Objection! Music stopped. Those magicians you liked. Was it this bunch? Apollo! They're not a bunch! Hmm, I see. Still, I have to wonder. Why include a commemorative stamp like that in a business letter? Good question. Well, pretty stamps are always better, and you can't beat Troop Gamory. But the whole murder plan was a failure because of it. Ironic, don't you think? It's like rain on your wedding day. Uh, Prosecutor Gavin? Uh, Prosecutor Gavin is apparently, uh, constipated. Prosecutor Gavin? Gra- Gra- Grandma Ray. Uh, what's with Gavin? Might I just ask one question of this witness? In your testimony just now, you stated this was your first work that was other than a painting. Please tell me, what exactly did you make? Can I ask why? No, just answer the goddamn question, now! Eek! Pro Prosecutor Gavin, you're usually not the one whose volume concerns me. Yes, it is unbecoming me, I apologize. But, I must know, please, Miss, Ms. Missum, uh, no, Jesus. Ms. Missum, please tell me. <laughs> it was a book. A single page in a book. A book. Please more, be more specific. It was a handwritten note, a, a book, like a, like a diary. N no? I, I don't know! What, what's wrong with Prosecutor Gavin? He looks like he just saw a ghost. I may have missed some, uh, this book. Was there a picture of a silk hat on the back cover, yes or no? How... how'd you know? Objection! What the fuck is going on? Prosecutor Gavin, the defendant is answering all your questions. Stop badgering her. He's told you nothing, has he? You're soiled, sully mentored, nothing. Sullied who? Phoenix Wright. Who else? Daddy? He never told you about the trial seven years ago. About how he came to lose his attorney badge. It was a certain piece of evidence that decided his fate, you know. A certain diary. On the back bore a mark of a silk hat. Oh, yeah, I mean, I kind of figured they were going to be connected because he kept mentioning seven years. I'm going to assume Phoenix didn't kill anyone. Phoenix Wright tossed out of the possession by false evidence. 
And the forger who made it that evidence was a 12-year-old girl, apparently. Is this girl standing right in front of me? Bear, you must tell us. The evidence you made was used in a trial seven years ago. Who asked Drew Mission for you, you, you to forge the evidence? For all of our sakes. Who was it? Oh, she's going to pass out. We saw that in the opening. We only met once. You, you met the client. Well, who was it? It was... She's gonna pass out. It was... What's going on with Vera? She's staring at Prosecutor Gavin's face again. Yeah, what? Is there something about me? I remember clearly. I remember who gave me the book, the diary. Oh, it was his brother. Who was it? Uh, choke? Oh, she's not passing out. She was poisoned. Her fucking nail polish. She was biting her nails. Timber. The devil. Thump. Defendant Vera Misham condition unconscious. Oh, she's not dead. That's good. Examiner's diagnosis, acute aqua nine poisoning. This ends the recording of the trial for the murder of uh, Drew Misham. Uh, Vera Misham was, during the trial, poisoned by an unknown assailant. The dosage was just under the lethal amount, sparing the defense life. Oh, that's good. She's currently in intensive care and is not to be disturbed for any reason. A very simple case at first glance until it finally began to show its true colors. The long road to the truth takes us to the record of another trial. In some ways, that was the starting point of all of it. And this is where you must go. That is definitely not your brother. Is that just a younger... Uh... Cavalier? Cavalier, whatever the hell his name is. Uh, and that is where we must go. Oh my god, you're so fucking cute! <laughs> to find the whole truth. <laughs> to be continued. Uh. uh, yeah, I'll save. Uh, thank you very much. That is gonna be it for this episode. Thank you for watching. I will see you all next time. Have a great day. Bye.